All right, and we're back with another episode. I am really excited about this conversation we're going to have right here because without this, the podcast that you're listening to right now wouldn't have ever happened. Now, I've known for a number of years when it comes to creating a podcast, I knew for a number of years that I always need to create one. I've seen people just have amazing success with their show, a great outlet, interviewing amazing people, um, to really be able to highlight just so many wonderful things, real things, truth all around the world. So when it came to creating a podcast, I always kind of wondered why it took me so long to launch one. Well, it was because of this right here. You cannot have transformation without isolation. And one of the things that the Lord had to do for me is to isolate me, to get me all to himself in a way that was very abrupt because I wasn't doing it on my own. So for my benefit, he had to literally cut things off, bring me to my knees. And I also pressed into that because I saw it happening over and over and over again. Yet I wasn't listening. I wasn't catching the signs. I was not paying attention. And then eventually I was just like, okay, Lord, like I'm, I'm hands up, hands up. What do you want me to do? What are we doing here? And long story short, it was in that moment that he really caught my attention to be like, we need to transform different parts of you before the elevation happens. I don't know about you, but have you ever had this moment where you just knew that you were meant for more, a bigger impact, or just in general, maybe not a big impact has ever been something that's been valuable or something that has been a calling on your life, but that there is just more. Arguably, most of us have those moments because in our innate being, the way that we were designed, the way that we were created, there is so much more, so much that we have not tapped into yet because of, gosh, limiting beliefs, fears, our environment, so many different things. And we let those things hold us captive rather than pressing into Okay, what is that more? And who do I need to become to get to that more? So what does isolation look like? Well, just so happens that my isolation really coincided with the global pandemic. When the pandemic hit, there was a lot of stories floating around of what was going to happen. And there were parts of me of being like, okay, well, if this is it, what are we going to do, Lord? Like, what are we going to do? And I remember having that conversation of no matter what, I'm ready. Yeah, if I'm re- if if you're calling me home, I'm ready to come home. If you want more out of me, I I'll give you more. But I knew he was calling me to share his word and be a light for him more than ever before. And what have we always been brought up saying, hearing, being exposed to? Don't share politics. Don't share your religious views. Don't mix religion and business, politics and business, like all these things to separate. But here's what I know. You can't separate them. It's still a part of who you are. For example, I used to do a lot of social media marketing coaching. Back when I was a coach, I did my on-camera confidence coaching. And in that was how do you obviously share your story? And then how do you market yourself? How do you put that online and and do it in the way that is congruent, um, that feels good to you, authentic to you, all that, right? Well, the number one question I always got was, hey, do I have a business page, then a personal page? And I would let them kind of share as to why, because everybody has their, what they think, you know, they think is going to be a good, um, a good option. And then I would share with them. I would say, no, you need to have it all be in one profile. These are specifically coaches. And with a coach, this is part of your brand, part of who you are, right? And they would say, why, why would I mix the two? Because you can't separate the two. You're going to have people that are going to come to your personal profile. They're going to get to know you and they're going to get to know what you do. But more importantly, they're going to get to know you, which is going to get them more connected into what you're doing to see if you're the best fit. On a business profile, for example, you're just showing them the business, the, the PC, the marketing, the this is only what I want you to see. On a personal profile, you get the raw, the dirty, the real. And for so long, we tried to separate all of that when really we should be pressing into that because people want to see the raw and the real. 
Now, when it comes to brick and mortar businesses, product based businesses, um, you know, a roofing company, lawn care, you can still mix that in with what you do on your personal profile. However, some of those are just, they just want to go to the page and just see, okay, what are your services costs? What are they? And when it comes to cutting your lawn, like, I mean, it really, does it really matter who the person is? To some it does, but whatever, you get the point. You got to connect all of them. You really got to combine all of them. So back to my point, we are in a global pandemic. Lord, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to be a mouthpiece for me. Okay. Well, what does that look like? Because what I have always had in, in my, my core is I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be a copycat. I don't want to be a duplicate. I want to be what you've called me to be. It's just like our, our fingerprint, right? Every fingerprint for every person is different. That's why they have you fingerprint if you go into the gym or fingerprint if you go into a facility that has, you know, certain security measures. Because only you have your fingerprint. It is unique to you. And that's exactly how we should be approaching our everyday life, how we speak to people, our businesses, our content, everything. It has to be unique to us because if we're just a copycat of everybody else, then what is that? The things that get me going the most, and hopefully it should for you too, is when you have fresh revelation. Or when you hear fresh revelation from somebody else, oh my gosh, I've never heard that before. That's good. Mm, Let me think about that. Ooh, those are my favorite. I actually have a pastor friend of mine. His name is Pastor Humberto Revenato. Hopefully I said that right. (laughs) Um, Out of um, San Antonio, Texas. Revive Church San Antonio. Highly recommend checking it out. This man is around my age. But the way that this man has studied scripture, his revelation, is, gosh, just the way he interprets things and churns things up in his spirit and is able to relay the revelations the Lord has given to him is unlike anything else I've ever seen. Anything else I've ever seen. And on a future episode, we're going to talk about how being a part of one of his fasts in his church, even though I live in Southern California and he lives in San Antonio, Texas, it brought one of the biggest breakthroughs of my life. It broke off a big addiction that I didn't even know was that bad. So that is a whole nother podcast entirely. However, this man, the way he interprets the time he spends with the Lord, what he, what he turns up in his spirit to, to, to get out is a well, there is a well there. And I don't know about you, but I love being around wells because they take time. They sit on it. They think on it. They really are intentional with what they've been given. They're not trying to rush the process, microwave the process. And when it comes to the transformation, we all want the quick fix. How can I lose 30 pounds in two days? (laughs) How can I go from, you know, a couple dollars to a million dollars in my bank account? How can I have no love in my life to finding the love of my life? I mean, fill in the blank. We all want it to be like that. But anything worth having is worth the wait. And God's not going to give you something before it's time. There's too much at risk. Way too much at risk. You don't know the value fully of it yet. So the isolation that you have to go through in order for that true transformation, a lot of that isolation, what it is, is you taking that time with yourself and taking that time with the Lord and prioritizing that. Hands down. When everybody wants the cheat code, that's the cheat code. That is what your heart's desire is. That is what you long for, truly, at the end of the day. But people get so caught up in the fast life or the the Netflix shows or the thing that's just right there and tangible because it's convenient. Let's talk about convenience for a second. Is it easier to go through a fast food line drive through or to cook a healthy meal? What's faster? We obviously know the answer. It's called fast food for a reason. But the nutrients, the nutritional value, everything between a fast food meal and a home-cooked meal is vastly different. Vastly different. 
Now, maybe for some of y'all, it's really not that different because you're cooking meals that aren't that healthy at home. <laughs> but you get the point. When you are cooking with raw ingredients, real ingredients, you're not having all these preservatives and salt and crazy amounts of things that are not good for your body. It, it makes a big difference on your health, how you feel. I remember there was a point in time where I got like super healthy and I cut out salt from everything. And then anytime there was a little bit of salt on something, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> now I've added more sodium back into my diet because I actually needed it in order for me to stay hydrated. But I'm very cautious on things that I put on my food and certain foods that I eat because I know how it's going to react to my body. I know how I'm going to feel. Or I just know subconsciously that's not the best choice. It's really not. I've had a lot of people say, Molly, you're fit. You could probably eat anything or you probably eat super, super healthy. I could eat, honestly, whatever I wanted. But if I did that, there's no self-discipline. If I did that, I would feel sluggish and gross. If I did that, I wouldn't have the same productive productivity as I do today. Period. So I make, I make conscious choices of the food I put in my body. But when your girl wants a cheat meal, she's going to have a cheat meal. And that cheat meal is going to be good. And it's usually some kind of burger, fries, a big steak, potato, like something that's like meaty, right? Anyways, self-discipline is huge. And I am pretty sure inside of this podcast, I'm going to have a whole series, a whole season when it comes to discipline. And let me pause on this for a second because I love getting a, I love getting feedback on this. When the word discipline is heard, when that comes to mind, what comes up for you? Revolt? Oh, I feel like a kid again. I feel like I'm in trouble. Typically, those are the things that come up rather than I know this is going to be good for me. I know I need to do this. And just like any good parent, they discipline their children, not because they want to hurt them and come down on them. They want to guide them on the best decisions. And when you don't make the best decision, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to be disciplined. Coming from a childhood of a lot of discipline, meaning I got in trouble a lot. I was a bad liar. I'll, I'll give you some examples because my parents still don't let me live this down. There was in high school, primarily, I was just, I tried to get away with things. I really did try and it did not work. And a couple instances, A, there was a beach trip that myself and my friends were planning and somebody, they needed somebody to drive. So I took my mom's car and I told her I was going to a friend's house. We went to the beach, hung out on the beach and the beach from where I lived at the time in Oregon was maybe like an hour, hour and a half away. So we piled into the car, went to the beach, came home, told her I stayed at a friend's. She's like, well, why is there sand in the trunk? And I was like, uh, um, she, she has a sandy driveway and somebody put stuff with sand in it. And that's how there got sand in the trunk. And she starts laughing. She was like, seriously? Well, that landed me into being grounded for a very long time. And they still will say, Molly's a bad liar. Remember the sand in the trunk? Never will live that down. Another instance, took my mom's car again. Went out with some friends. I was not where I told them I was. And this guy was belligerently drunk, apparently got mad at me. I don't even remember why. And he kicks my mom's car and leaves this huge dent in the side right above the tire. I don't even remember what lie I told her, but then eventually I had to tell her the truth. And then, um, I think we reached out to his family. They didn't do anything about it. Whatever. I got grounded for the entire summer and there's plenty of other things. Unfortunately, I just was trying to get away with a lot and it never worked. It never worked. And back then I was like, oh my gosh, I literally can't get away with anything. But as you get older, you see that as protection. Where does lying get you? Nowhere good. Where does being deceitful get you? Nowhere good. Being where you're not supposed to be, nowhere good. Nowhere good. So I, I just kind of gave up after that. I was like, you know what? I, I'm done trying to lie because I obviously feel horrible. I can never get away with it. So let's just stop doing it. And then I just stopped doing it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it's literally like comical, right? Anybody have stories like that? We were just like, man, I made some dumb choices when I was younger. But back to the transformation, back to the isolation piece. In order for you to really see the parts of you that need to shift and change, you have to be isolated. 
you have to first do a self audit and then also say, Lord, I want you to reveal to me, put up that mirror, reveal to me the things that I need to shift and change. Show me, reveal that to me. Even, we've talked about this on prior episodes, having people around you that can give you that feedback lovingly to show you those blind spots. Hiring a coach, having a mentor, having good friends that are going to give it to you raw and real instead of telling you what you want to hear. So often we just want to be told what we want to hear because it's, it sounds better. It appeases our flesh. But in order for us to truly transform, we got to get down to the nitty gritty. We got to hit the root system as to why those problems exist. Or even maybe if there isn't a problem, it's just now an elevation of where you are now to where you want to be from where God needs you to be in order for you to be fully used. It's going to take crushing, pruning, refining, like loss of relationships, severing ties, like battling those limiting beliefs, winning the war in your mind constantly. No matter how many times you have to renew your mind in a day. There is so much that you have to do in order to have the mind of Christ, but it's always worth it. It's always worth it. And I know a lot of people tell me that they just have a lack of fulfillment. A lot of successful and even unsuccessful people. And when I say successful, people that have the everything that everybody wants, right? And they're and from the outside looking in, they have the relationships or the money or the cars or the home or the trips or whatever that we all deem successful air quotes or people who aren't but don't have that but they don't have the fulfillment and I fully truly believe the lack of fulfillment that people feel is because they're not willing to go into isolation to have that transformation they're not willing to heal parts of them that have been hurting for a long time probably even since their childhood And it's leaked into their adult life. And they're like, why do I have this big gaping hole? And even a lot of believers feel that way. Because they fully haven't submitted everything to Christ. You have to fully surrender and submit. We cannot do it on our own strength, period. I've heard this really powerful phrase, and this could be used in all areas of your life, whether it's business, personal, relationships. You can go fast alone but you can go further together. Choose. Choose which one. For all those um, athletes out there, I did track and field for a couple years, and what I loved is doing the sprints. The, whether it was the four-by-one relay, four of us running 100 meters, or just doing the 100-meter dash, till eventually the kind of, as I got older through high school, they actually moved me, okay, now to the 200-meter dash. Now let's do more of the, gosh, I don't even remember what it's called now, but the ones that just are like the 1800 meter dash or whatever, where it's longer stints. In my mind, I'm like, I want the sprint. I want to get it over with. Let's go. But I definitely wasn't the fastest. I made it to state one year and got smoked by these women that were so fast. But what eventually... In my senior year, when I did track, and I did, I think it was the 1800 meter. I don't know if it was 1800 or the 3600. Regardless, it was a longer one. In the back of my mind, I was like, why didn't I do this all along? Yes, we want the sprint because we're done with it. Boom. But the endurance races of you got to have a pace, self-discipline. Because in an 1800 meter dash, 3600 meter dash, the longer ones, right? Like you got to pace yourself and have that self-discipline as much as we want to like hit the gas and boom, go. That last lap around the track, if you don't have anything in the tank, like what was it all for? You got to pace yourself and that takes a lot of self-discipline. People who do Ironmans, who do marathons, like there is so much self-discipline that goes into that. And I remember my senior year in high school when I clicked in being like, I should have done this all along. Why didn't I? I didn't have the mind of let's have more self-discipline and let's do it for the the long haul. And now as I'm an adult, as an entrepreneur, I realize how silly that was. Given I was in high school, you know, still learning a lot. I am all about the marathon, not the sprint. Now life is about different sprints inside of the marathon. You just got to keep going. We teach that a lot inside of our community at Girl Power Alliance, as we are a network marketing opportunity where women can come in with our done for you membership of personal professional leadership development, 
They can come in, learn, grow themselves, help other women come in, learn, grow themselves. And now everybody's learning and growing and you can introduce women to it and make an income up to six different ways. In the network marketing industry, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Most of the multimillionaires that I know in the industry have been in it for years and they had a lot of failures and just didn't give up. They knew that they knew that they knew that they needed to be in there. But so often we get fed the lie, come in and make 10 grand a month in three months, six months. Come on. I actually tell our women, because my role in the company is I'm what we call the director of field development. I'm in the trenches with ambassadors, vision casting, three-way calls, like really being able to help people catch the vision of what we're doing here and bring clarity to any questions they have. I love vision casting. I could literally, actually I do quite literally do that every single day and I love it. I tell them, what if it took you two years to make $10,000 a month? Would you still want it? Yeah, I still would. What if it took you three years and you're getting $10,000 a month, September, October, November, December, January. Now you're bumping up from there. Would you still wait it out? Yeah, I would. And when I hear the kind of, eh, I would, I'm like, of course you would. Where else are you going to make that kind of money? Where? Three years to do it, that's it? When you're in a job that will never pay you that? Come on. Yeah, I guess you're right. But they're combating these lies that are in their head of, but somebody else told me I could do it faster. I'm sorry, somebody lied to you. Hands down. Somebody lied to you. People want to tell you what you want to hear rather than tell you the truth. Because if they can get you in based off what it is that you want rather than the truth, win for them. And then only a win for them. Because what I've learned in the industry of business, network marketing, is so many people will not come alongside and lock arms with others. They're like, here, go figure it out. Now, there's a lot of systems that you can plug into to be able to figure it out. And there's definitely a place, a big place, actually, in business for you to be a go-getter and a self-starter. You can't keep depending on all these other people to do it for you, to get you in the mood and the mode and the motivation and inspiration. You got to be your own inspiration. You have to be your own motivation. You have to dig down deep into your why. No one's going to do it for you. But I see how shallow people's whys are when one little thing comes up. They reach out to 10 people. Everybody says, no, oh, this is a scam. It doesn't work. Really? Or are you just not in it for the long haul? It's not about how long. It's about how many. How many we can serve. But we get so fixated on how long. And I will tell you, in a season of isolation before the big transformation and breakthrough comes, you're going to feel like it's lasting forever. Forever. A lot of people that I know, myself included, in their transformation season, it was years. Years before they saw the big breakthrough. And I believe I'm still in the midst of a big breakthrough on the way with what it is that the Lord is doing. We're never done. We've never crossed the finish line. The finish line is going to heaven. And I don't know about you, but I feel like I got a long time until that happens. But since I don't know when my time comes and when it's up, I'm going to keep pressing forward and helping as many people as possible and living out my purpose. So when I get to heaven, the Lord can say, good job. Well done. Well done. So you have to take those seasons of isolation seriously and let it ride and be open I know it feels like your heart is filleted out on a table and it feels so painful and so vulnerable and so, oh, I'm dying to my, yes, you are. You're dying to flesh. You really are. But without that, you're never going to get that fulfillment, stepping into your purpose and getting all that God has ordained for you. You won't. We get fed lies on social media constantly of like, oh, it was an overnight sensation oh, I got this and I'm only, you know, a millionaire. I'm a millionaire and I'm 25 years old or whatever. Yes, people have big breaks. They've also put in a lot of hard work. There's a lot of sacrifices people make that they don't necessarily show you. We got to stop looking at the top low-hanging fruit and start digging into the root system. You have to dig into the root system. And most of the time when we catch ourselves comparing ourselves to other people, It is out of a, gosh, I'm never going to be able to be like this person. I'm never going to be able to do it. And we get caught up in limiting beliefs and lies that it's not for us. 
rather than asking, okay, Lord, what is for me? What do you have for me? And what's next? And what do you say? And literally every second of the day, having that conversation with him, talking with God as if he's sitting right next to you and just show me, show me what that looks like, Lord. Show me what that looks like. You have to have those moments of isolation. Again, back to me being in my car, (laughs) being in my car, recording these podcasts. This is isolation for me that has been so healthy, so healing and helpful that when we came up with the idea of where we're going to record this podcast for now, my husband's like, go do it in the car. I'm like, huh, okay. Because I can have the ultimate silence, just like I get so clear in revelations and just things just flow when I'm in the car because I have set that place as a place of isolation, preparation for elevation to contribute to my transformation. But it's not only my transformation. It's all the people that are connected to me that I'm supposed to impact so they can have their own transformation. So don't neglect the isolation season. Create time daily to spend it in the Lord's presence, listening more than talking, diving into his word, worshiping, and watch your life change. Do that for 90 days. I would say 30 days. You can start with 30, times it by three. 90 days. It takes 90 days to create a true new habit. And trust me, once you commit to that, you are going to have everything and anything. I'm tired. I got this. I got that. I can't do it. Talk about isolation. If you've been following me on social media at all, you've seen for the last almost two years, I've been getting up anywhere from like two to four o'clock in the morning. And as it's time's gone on, I've gotten up earlier. So now I get up at two o'clock in the morning during the week to have my quiet time with the Lord for two hours before I go to the gym. I give myself a nearly five hour runway before, actually almost a six hour runway before I take any call. Because I know that I need that. Mind and bo- mind and spirit first, body after that. And then I get ready for the day. And now I'm ready to pour into people because I have a full cup and I just spent that time with, the father, because so often I was spending all my time doing everything else, but time with him. That has taken practice. That has taken wars in my mind that I've had to overcome. That has taken a lot. It has not been easy. There's been so many times and reasons why I shouldn't, but I always make it a priority. Even on days where I have a rest day at the gym, I will sleep in, maybe not go to the gym. However, I will still get up and have my hour to two hours with the Lord because I want that. I crave that. That's what my soul longs for. And at the beginning, it didn't. I knew I needed to do it. Then it went from a need to a want. Now I get to. Now I get to spend that time with him. And what a beautiful blessing that is. You know why we don't spend time with him? We get caught up in everything else that we think is far more important than spending time with our creator, listening to him, understanding his heart, opening up his word, let it speak, let it speak to us. We're so quick on the strategy. Let me pay for this. Let me find this person and that person. When we have the ultimate strategist, the ultimate, ultimate. Mm. Took me a long time to learn that too. But my isolation that I've done for myself with the Lord is so vital. And now I see times where if I'm having a, a little bit of a rough day, it's been a heavy day. I know when to be like, all right, time out, time on the play. I need a break. I need to step away, go do something else, find something to pour into my cup, whether that's listening to music, taking a walk, getting my nails done, whatever, talking to a friend, getting a massage, getting a treat. I mean, anything, anything to treat myself. To be like, you know what? We'll come back again tomorrow. It's okay. We can time out right here. We can only take so much, but the world will tell us we're not doing enough. We need to do more. We have to know our limits. And speaking of limits, actually one of my favorite books, it's called No Limits by John Maxwell. It's all about raising your capacity. I'm now going through it a third time. And arguably you could go through each chapter and spend a month on one chapter dissecting and just the meat that's in there is insane. John Maxwell is one of my favorite authors. I mean, the dude is a well. And he's like in his late 80s, 90s now, still speaking on stages, still going after it. If you want to find a person to reverse engineer for all my leaders out there, reverse engineer that guy. What kind of health does he have? What kind of team does he have? 
mindset does he have? And with every elevation of a leader, there is going to come oppressing. There is going to come um, a lot of responsibility. There's going to come a lot of just different, honestly, demonic forces that are going to try to take you down. People that are going to speak death over you. People that are going to come against you. People that you love that are now jealous and envious of you. People trying to tear you down because now you're being elevated when it's your time because God said, now's the time. There's going to be good and there's going to be heavy moments. And we get to be prepared for all of them. But back to John Maxwell, that guy probably has to have super heavy moments. I'm sure he has been tested and tried more times than any of us can count. And he's still going in his late 80s or however old he is. He's still pressing in and he's like, I'm not done. I love that. I've met so many people after the age of 40. They're like, oh, it's too late. But now I'm seeing a lot of women actually press in in their 50s, 60s, and 70s saying, I still have breath in my lungs. Let's go. You are never too late to have an isolation season to really figure out and drill down deep. Okay, who am I? What is my purpose? What do I need to heal from? And be patient and gracious with yourself in the process. We must do that. So you have to be able to take that time for yourself every day. Create that time with the Lord every day, non-negotiable, just like the food you have to eat, the water you have to drink, scrolling you want to do on social media. God should be way in front of that. And if you're not able to do those things, like I just encourage you to do a fast. Fast for like three days, especially with food. Because in those hunger moments, you get to lean on him being like, okay, show me. In those weak moments, show me. Do a fast on social media if you must. If you find that being a stronghold in your life and see what happens. I love a fast that I did with my husband before we even started dating. It was a spiritual fast of replacing all music with worship music or Christian music, replacing scrolling with reading the Bible, praying for 40 minutes. And every five to 10 minutes, there's different things that we prayed for, whether it's family, thanking the Lord in advance, um, fears that we had to lay at his feet. I mean, you name it. What else did we replace? Um, those are the things I can think of as of right now. But really taking things that we do every day and replacing it with something that's actually going to produce fruit. The music was hard. The praying wasn't easy for 40 minutes consecutively. Uh, the scrolling, that was challenging. But the music thing stuck with me. Music and praying definitely stuck with me. The music was so interesting how sensitive that I got to all the words that I wasn't hearing before to what I'm hearing now. You might get sucked into a good beat, but that's how they bring you in. And then the words are getting into your system and the fibers of your being. And now we're okay with the, you know, sexualizing women, the drugs, the money, the self, self, self. And we wonder why people are so broken. If you're if you're feeling that way, then check the music that you're listening to. For example, I love country music as well. My husband and I were talking about this the other day. But majority of country music is actually very depressing about a heartbreak. Or all about love. And all about just so focused on love or heartbreak, love or heartbreak. So you have to really be conscious with what you're filling your mind with. The people you're listening to, the music you're listening to, all of it. Super conscious. And ask for a sensitive spirit. Watch things shift for you. So again, I encourage you, press into the isolation season. I feel like there's so many people either in it or coming upon one right now. Because now more than ever, with the world being super loud, with all of its trash, you have to get really quiet to understand what you believe and what you're meant to do. Because we're not meant to be sheep just following the herd. We're meant to be lions leading the pack. So that's entirely up to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. It means the world to me that you would lean in, listen in, and be able to hear the value that's being shared on this show. Don't forget, if you love this episode, rate the show, leave me a review, be sure to share it with a friend, and don't forget to tag me on social media. I will definitely be giving you a shout out. Also, come say hi, drop in the DMs. I would love to be able to hear what stood out to you the most on the episode And if there's any topics that you would like to hear on the show, we'll see you next time.